the secreting pus with each bite. Oh, what a wretched feeling. The snakes are rising higher and higher, ascending from my stomach into my throat. At this point, I was so nauseous, I vomited. Little miniature snakes fell from my mouth. What's wrong with me? I screamed. You are filled with guilt, replied being number one. Guilt has a most unpleasant feeling. As I stared at the blood oozing from being number two, I couldn't help but regret my cold, callous actions. The two beings were my friends who I'd enjoyed so many beautiful walks with. Being cool was not fitting in this particular situation. I helped being number two back up on its foot and together we started walking. I was soaking wet and still felt pangs of heavy disappointment for I could not run off ahead. I even curled thoughts of amputating and disposing being number two. You see, I was afraid to experience that wretched guilt. As I looked down upon the two beings, my disappointment faded, for I began to marvel at how beautifully in sync they were moving together, like clockwork, almost magic-like. I was especially moved by this. It was almost as if they were together as one, but yet existed as two. Perhaps this is what it's like when one meets one's soulmate. <sighs> being number one and being number two were destined to be with each other. Pace of a snail, we finally made it back to the cave. This even shocked the wise bird who was busy darting too fast for cover. I see you made it back in one piece, tweeted the bird. You mean three pieces, stupid bird, I shouted. God, you see, I am with being number one and being number two. That would make three of us. Anastasia, replied the bird, you are ever the most eccentric. What does a wet bird know? <laughs> a wet bird is an interesting sight to see. You have to see it to know what I mean. Soaked feathers look so odd. The next morning, it came as no surprise when being number one announced that it was going to marry being number two. And so I accompanied them to the local church to get married. Unfortunately, the pastor did not take well to my presence. What are you talking about? Who is marrying who? He inquired. Are you blind? I shouted. Being number one and being number two want to get married. Pray, do tell me, Anastasia, who is being number one and being number two? Asked the pastor. I pointed to the beings. The pastor then said, Anastasia, darling, you cannot expect your legs to marry each other. Whatever gave you that idea? Oh, but pastor, look how well they work together. When my left leg is injured, my right leg offers its undying support. I have never seen such a beautiful display of love and selflessness before. The pastor gently said, Anastasia, my child, one day, you will be blessed with a being that is in sync with you. And when that day comes, 
You both will have my blessings. But that being may not exist, I said. The pastor looked at me with gentle eyes. There are no obvious answers in this world, he said. But I do know this. Two powerful forces will have to cross paths one day. The pastor's answer created a new kind of warmth in my heart. A warmth I had not felt before. This warmth was now my new friend. And what, my darling diary, do you ask I call my new friend? I call it. Hope, sweet, old-fashioned hope, Anastasia. Draußen in die Seiten reiß ich, weiß nicht, wo ich abends ruh. Manche Schöne macht wohl Augen, meine, ich gefiel ihr sehr, wenn ich nur was wollte taugen, so ein armer Rump nicht mehr. 